This grubby little box with very little to discern on it except the letter N and a rather poor map of the world um, actually houses something rather pleasantly nice. It is a Pico. It's a diesel, a DB118 according to the label, and I got it as a non-runner. <laughs> Hi there YouTubers and welcome to another servicing video from Source 6233 and tonight's project is this Pico Diesel DB118. The box is surprisingly worn, split obviously, it should be a sleeve, but the locomotive itself looks in absolutely immaculate condition beautifully coloured um, and inside the polystyrene looks very good and when you lift the polystyrene off you've got what seems to be an instruction book and it's come in German, Russian, I think that's Polish, some other couple of languages which I don't get and I think Spanish underneath, but not English. And with it seems to be a parts list, mostly in German. Um, so I don't really know what it means. Excuse me. I can smell that it's come from a house where smoking took place. So apart from that, the smell, it looks in not too bad condition. Why the box lid is so poor and yet the rest of it isn't, I can't really fathom out. Anyway, let's leave that aside and we'll work on the locomotive. The emblem on the side tells us that it's a DB118. Can I get that into focus? Which I think is a class of European uh, locomotive. Double ended diesel. Comes as a non runner, so I'm not really sure what's involved. I'd like to see what's inside. And looking at it, I was looking for clips, but they're not there. The only thing I see are four screws. So I'm going to hazard a guess that these four screws will hopefully reveal a way into the locomotive. Working on the policy, nothing else fails. Keep unscrewing things until it falls apart. So it's four of them seem to be loose, so it doesn't come apart. What if I twist it? Oh, there we go. There we go. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. There we are. There we are. The screws body weights and two support brackets. They seem to be fixed into the top of the body shell. Yep, so I really don't want to move them. And glass fronted caps at each end. So here I have the mechanism. It seems to be pickups from the wheels. Okay, let me get my power clip wired up. I've got about four volts on it. 
Or can I apply 4 volts there? I can feel the motor trying to turn. So let me take it up to 6 volts. I can still feel it trying to turn, but obviously nothing's happening. So this time I'm just going to see... Oh, alright, okay. When I try manually turn the shaft, sorry, my dad's a short. It is quite stiff. Okay, I can see some screws that seem to be holding in the bogies, so I'm going to take them off. That will release any tension on the motor, and therefore I can concentrate on getting the motor going. If that's okay, then obviously these bogies will need tension. Short, oh, sorry, short the screws holding the bogey in. Contact springs, make contact these two tabs, and seem to be some kind of guns floating around. Okay into that later on and I'll do the same with the other bogey I think these are washers they are so I better remove those as well in case I lose them right and there again they are in clean condition. Something else in there. Okay. The motor still seems to be hmm, kind of reluctant to go. There's a couple of gear tries there, idler gears. So they could be requiring lubrication as well. Um, will they come out? They seem to be pinned in there. Um, let me take, see if the motor will come out. There we go. So that's the motor out. And that doesn't feel too bad. That turns freely. So, I think a little bit of lubrication on there. So now that I've got the motor out and access to the poles and there we go so it wouldn't do any harm to just apply some lubrication to the spindles so a little well moving into shot there we go a little well of oil just into there just into there and let that run a little bit one direction and the opposite direction a bit noisy mm -hmm. okay so let me just try a bit of lubrication these idler gear mountings I worked on another Pico once before and that was all it needed was just a bit of TLC so let me try and fit this back in again these springs rub against these pole pieces um, right as long as I don't short them out
Let's see if that's helping. be lined up. There we go. Just make sure it's in the ultimate position. Optimum position. It is noisy. But maybe I'll just let the lubrication sit in. But at least it's working. Then if I hold it, see if the gears will work. And the gears are operating now. Yeah, okay. So that's fine. Now look at the bogies. I imagine a little bit of lubrication wouldn't do any harm. They actually look in nice clean condition. Just a little bit of something in there. A bit of fluff or something. And so I'll just apply a little touch of oil here. Trying to avoid what I just did, which was uh, touch the, sh the rim of the wheel. So, drop some oil in there. And that will work its way up to the spindles. And that seems very, very free. Right, uh, let's fit this on. This could be quite a a quick quick repair, quick video. Okay. Washer and the retaining screw. Being careful not to over tight, over tighten, and that's now running. Oops, need just a little bit more juice because of the extra torque. I'm certainly trying to work. Yep, there we go. Again, that will probably run in. Uh, let me hold it against the gear. Still struggling a little bit. Mm. Yes, it's definitely struggling. Oh, I can see what's happening. I can see what's happening. Uh, this spindle has come out of place and the gear isn't meshing properly. Right, let's try again. There we go. There we go. It's of course only the inside spindle which is activated by the motor mechanism. Right, okay. And it should actually work from the pickups as well. There. So now for the other bogey sure. and the bolt. Mm. 
make it tight and then back off half a turn lovely Maybe just a bit more I think good so now let's see where we are I think these are actually a shortcut to the contacts yep there we go just have this one here to line up That in there, hold this down, and this should now hopefully work. Oops, uh, the motor has rotated slightly. Oh, uh -huh. the contacts have come adrift from. Yeah. Okay, I'll take this out again. See, when I'm putting it in, I have to make sure that these two here match some contact on there. So, this is an insulating, uh, this is an insulating blanket. So, I'll just make sure that goes in there. And keeping these two apart like so It's trying. Sorry, I keep moving out of shot. Just need to get the contact right with the motor. About there. Interestingly, the motor isn't clamped in any way within the housing. Um, it's free to rotate. So the this pad, oops, just dropped my screw out there. This pad, I think, also acts as a friction pad to prevent it rotating against the torque of the motor. At least I think of it as something like that anyway. It's also anyway that seems to be working. So I'm going to put the casing on. Because that will hold the whole assembly together. Just before I do, um, on this side this had this blanket has come round a bit so I'm going to just reseat that okay and I should have taken note of which position the motor was in when I removed it but I didn't so uh, can I put it in about there and it sits down into the cradle. And it works there. Good. So, I'm now going to fit this into the housing. I don't think it makes any difference which way around it goes. It doesn't seem to be anything one way or the other.
and this is looking good this is looking good one retaining screw just trying to get it to sink into the housing oh, pardon me Oh, that's going in okay. But no, it's not. It's, um, it hasn't caught. So, have these moved, I wonder? Or is there an orientation? I wonder if that's the way it should be. Let's take my label off. I wonder if that's the way it should be. I don't feel it catching there either. Yep, that should be it. Should be okay, so let me try again. Take the screw out. Power strips are getting in the road. There we go. Have a quick check. Yep. Oh, that's catching there. Good. And this one. Good. Right, so I'll try it with these two in just now. Wow. Well. Seem to be working. Now, the story behind why I'm not using the rollers, um, I've actually used them for my TT repair. Um, so I'm waiting another set of rollers so I can have one set for this and one set for the TT. So let's take this over to the test track and see if we can get it to run. The DB118 sitting on the track ready to go. So, I'm going to hopefully send it forward. Oh, have we any power at all that shoots forward? On the back. And I've got a strange kind of pulsing sound. I don't know if it's just the gearing, perhaps. And maybe if I'd let it run in, it might be okay. But it's certainly going very, very smoothly. Apply a bit more speed. It's still not even half full to jet. But that's still full voltage and it's not really going much faster. That's okay, you don't want it to go too fast. Alright, let's see what happens in the other direction. Certainly moves away smooth enough. On the back, behind my little shuttle. No lights, I noticed. Okay. Don't see much wrong with that. Just a little bit of lubrication and freeing up, and there it is. There's not really much more I can do with my lovely little Pico, the DB118. Um, I've had it lubricated, I've had it running, it goes well. I took the liberty of sellotaping the burst corner of the box. The box, well, I don't know if there's much we can do about that. It's obviously been sun beaten 
um, and it's quite old. The inside has been very carefully preserved, nice and clean, although it has come from a smoking family and when you open it up you get hit by the, the aroma of cigarettes. Um, so I'm just going to put this back here and close it up. Once I can get it in, it should be alright. Oh yes, that would be it there. And another short, simple repair. Thanks for watching people. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I'm glad it's a bit simpler than some of the other ones we've done. Especially after my Triang Trilogy. Um, so, if you like that, please subscribe. Uh, please comment favourably. And uh, maybe you can give me a little thumbs up and a like. That'd be great. At this point, saying thank you to everyone who has subscribed, has commented favourably and has liked. Well, I thank you very, very much. Till we meet again, take care. Bye for now.